بعد آؤز باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان الصلاة قانت علی المؤمنین کتاب موقوتا رب شرح لی صدری ویسر لی امری وحل الاغدتم من لسان یفقہ قولی My respected brothers and my sisters Today my focus of khutbah is that how I can make my salah, my prayer better so that I can meet really Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when I am in my salah. So I can feel that. You know, there are two words. One is mindfulness. And the second word is meaningfulness. Mindfulness is that you are aware of the present moment. You acknowledge the current moment. The time you are going through, you have a full realization that where you stand at this moment. That's a mindfulness. The second meaningfulness that everything we do in life, we know the goal of it. Why am I doing it? Mindfulness really is such a beautiful concept. And because most of us, we live either in our past or in our future, either in huzn or in fear of future. We don't enjoy the current movement we go through. You can expand this concept from salah, from our family time, from our food, when we are enjoying something on our trip, most of us, we have lost this concept of mindfulness. And the worst effect of that is in our salah. One very weird thing you will notice, that when it comes to deen, we are very casual. We are very relaxed. We have totally different approach when it comes to deen. When I ask myself about my salah, I always will complain that, you know, my salah is not perfect. You know, I have a lot of deficiency in my salah. My relationship with Quran is not good. You know, my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not good. But if it comes to my personal life, that if I have any problem in my family, if I have any problem with my health, if I have any problem with my finances, I take that thing very serious. And I do my best to rectify it. I do my best to correct it. I lose my sleep. I lose my appetite. But when it comes to deen, then I am very relaxed. Ten years ago where I was, ten years after, I will be at the same place. There is one of the Sahabi, Usman ibn Abi al-As Saqafi. He was the in charge made of Taif the province of Taif by Prophet ﷺ. He realized when he was praying that he gets distracted. Shaitan gets over him. So he is not able to focus in his salah. He travels from Taif to Medina to meet Prophet ﷺ. Six days traveling going and six days traveling coming back to Taif. Because his concern was that I am losing my concentration in my salah. And salah is the most important because in salah, wallahi, there is a physical part of salah. But more important is the spiritual part of the salah. Because salah is from silah. Silah is a connection, connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the best station connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he travels all the way and asked his question to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa My brothers and my sisters, this is how really we should be worried and concerned when it comes to deen that I should do my best like what I do for my personal, you know, life. Now for Salah, there are few things which I want to discuss before we come to masjid. First thing, when Mawazin is saying, Hayya ala salah, hayya ala al-fala, you can go and ask 
any scholar of Arabic. These are the words that somebody is calling you from the depth of his heart, from the bottom of the, his heart, with love that you cannot describe in words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling his every abd to come towards salah which has falah for you. Second thing, before we come for salah, remember one more thing, my brothers and my sisters. You know, praying in masjid has 25 to 27 times more reward. Some of the scholars say that if you reach masjid, before the iqama is called and you join the imam then your reward is 27 times but if you miss the iqama or you miss any essential part of the salah and you join in the second raka you miss any rukun of salah then your reward will be 25 times Imam Bukhari rahmatullah about him, it comes that he got preoccupied one time and salah time came for Isha. And Imam Bukhari when he reaches to the masjid, salah was over. Imam Bukhari goes from masjid to masjid, masjid to masjid to find any masjid where he can catch his Isha salah. And wherever he goes, salah was over. He goes back to his home and he prays Isha Salah 27 times. One time of course as Fard and 26 times as a Nafil to compensate for one Salah that he missed in the Masjid. My brothers and my sisters, when we come to Masjid and while we are waiting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, one thing which I missed, which I want to mention here, and before I proceed further, you know, if this mindfulness that I was talking about and meaningfulness, if you go across the world, you will find two reasons that why we are so casual and careless about our deen. Two reasons. And these are the very two reasons on which Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam worked for 13 years on Sahaba. For 13 years. Number one is awareness of who really Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Knowing the marifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. We have very little understanding of who really Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Wallahi, if you and me, we know that who really Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, our night and day will change by 180 degree. That he is Basir. What is the meaning of Basir? When he sees things, what is the meaning of he sees? When he is Rahim, he is Rahman, he is Tawwab, he gives me opportunity of Tawbah. What exactly it means? So if we understand who really Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, it will change the paradigm of our life. The second thing which is affecting our religion the most is our understanding and belief about Akhirah. You know, we have corrupted concept about Akhirah. About Akhirah, we think that Allah is Rahman Rahim, He will forgive me. Somebody will do shifa on my behalf. My buzurg or my elder or my sheikh or somebody else will come and intervene on my behalf. Wallahi, we have the corrupted concept of Akhira. In Akhira, nobody will be dared to intervene until and unless he has permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they will intervene only if somebody will really qualify for that. For Sahaba, when Prophet is stay, saying to his own daughter Fatima, Razillah Ta'ala, Anna Fatima, your father will not be able to help you on that day. Your deeds are the only thing will help you on that day, my brothers and my sisters. Wallahi, we need to work on these two concepts about understanding of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Let me give you a little glimpse about who Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is. You know, we get very impressed from science technology 
we live in 21st, 22nd, 23rd century. We are the most advanced people. Our religion is backward. Our religion lives in 1400 years backward stone age. Let me give you a little introduction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the one who creates things from nothing. No science, no scientist, nobody can create things from nothing. They need something to create something. Allah is the only creator who can create things from nothing. When Allah creates anything, Allah doesn't get inspired from anything. Allah creates things with his original concept, original idea. As a human being, we get inspired. We see birds flying. We get this concept of making aeroplanes. Allah creates things without getting inspired from anything. And last, whatever Allah creates, the very first time whatever Allah creates is perfect. Is perfect. As a human being, we, we evolve our, our creation. You make iPhone this, after one year upgrade, after one year upgrade, no matter whatever we create, we create things and then things get evolved. But Allah, whatever He creates the very first time is perfect. He is the Khalik who is the perfect Khalik that you will not find any defect in any of His creations, my brothers and my sisters. So when you get in Masjid, before we start our Salah, think about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and my sisters. And think about few things before you start your Salah with the Imam. There are a couple of things that I will say. You know, one thing we should understand, you know this place, what is it called? Al-Mihrab. Al-Mihrab. Mihrab is from Harab. Fight battle when you are in prayer there will be a battle between you and your nafs and shaitan there is a very special shaitan assigned just for salah so he can distract you so you have to be aware that when you are reaching to your salah there will be a struggle during the salah there is a sahih hadith in which Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says about Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam that Nuh alayhi salam used to advise his followers that when you stand for salah you are about to start your interaction with Allah Rabbul Alameen Allah is directly focusing on you so this is disrespect of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you look right or left or if you move. So think about that you are in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As one of our Shaykh Hatim al assam he used to say whenever I stand for my salah, I think that Kaaba is in front of me and Jannah is on my right side and Jahannam is on my left side. And I am walking on a pull sirat and shaitan is behind me. And when I finish my prayer, as soon as I finish my prayer, I raise my hands and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is my prayer accepted? Look at the level of devotion, that how focused he was, but still he is worried and concerned my, my salah is accepted or not accepted my brothers and my sisters another thing which I will say whenever we say Allahu Akbar you know when we say Allahu Akbar our palm hand should be like this the back is facing backward when I say Allahu Akbar I am entering in my salah I am pushing this dunya backward I am pushing this dunya backward because now I am going in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, when you are standing in salah, the only thing is that you don't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But He is seeing you. He is looking at you. 
He is listening to every word you say. And that's why it is said the Salah is the best test for the sabr patience. Because in Salah, when you feel like you have to itch, you have to move, you have to scratch, that is the time that you have to make sure that no, I'm not going to move. This is dis disrespect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not part of my etiquette that I'm standing in front of anybody. If you go and stand in any respectable person, in front of him, you will try your best not to move. Wallahi, in Salah, we should try not to make up because that is the test of our patience when we are in our Salah. And I will recommend to you and me, my brothers and my sisters, Wallahi, it does not matter how many raka you pray. Just focus, even few, take your time. Don't rush. Take your time when you are in Ruku. Take your time when you are in Sajda. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about the day of judgment. Think about meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we are in our salah. There is a hadith in which Prophet says that somebody who enters in salah, some of them, they get one-tenth of it. One-tenth of the reward. Some of them, one-ninth. Some of them, one-eighth. And some of them, they get the full reward. So when we start our salah, think about only these two ahadiths, what Hazrat Nuh has said, and what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu is saying that I traveled all the way to join for salah. I want to make sure that in this salah, I will do my best that I get the full reward. Why to lose any reward? While I am here, I have spent time. I am here already, so I will do my best to get the full ajar. Another thing, when you come for salah in masjid, this is the most beautiful thing which I have heard about salah. And I want you to please pay attention to that. You know, when you go at somebody's house as a guest, the host, he honors you according to his status. He will give you food, he might give you gifts, he will do his best to take good care of you. This is the host of the dunya. When you come to masjid on the call of Hayya al-Salah, Hayya al-Falah, have this concept that you are the guest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is your host. And Allah who is a malikul mulk, who is a king of the kings, he is going to reward you according to his status. And wallahi, every time you come in masjid and you go home, you go truck load of reward and ajar from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have this concept that I'm going to meet as a guest to my host, Allah Rabbul al in the masjid. And when you are leaving, you are leaving with plenty of reward and gift. Look at ourselves. How loser we are. That we lose every salas that much. That's why it comes about Sahaba. As soon as Imam used to say, Assalamu Alaikum, Assalamu Alaikum, they used to get sad because they have lost that opportunity of meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As soon as Imam says Salah, but then they recoup, they get happy again, then inshallah. Allah will give me another opportunity in the next Salah that I will be able to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, there was a Sheikh in Medina, Sheikh Abdullah bin ash -Shinikiti. Somebody came and complained him that Sheikh, you know, at my home, we always have fight. Fight between wife and husband, fight with my kids, you know, it's a, it's a miserable life at home. So Sheikh asked him a question. He said, where do you pray your nafil and sunnah prayers? He says, Sheikh, I come in masjid and I do all my salah in masjid. He said, why don't we start from tomorrow? Pray your nafil and your sunnah at home, in front of your family in front of your kids. 
and then you will see the result of that. The same brother comes to Sheikh after two weeks and he says, Sheikh, Wallahi, the situation of my home has changed. Has changed. The fight has become in, is turned into harmony and peace. Because my kids, they see that I am remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I invite all of them. We pray together. So we all are on the same page. So this is the recommendation of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The best place to pray your sunnah and nafil is your home. Don't make your home cemetery, graveyard, qabrustan. We need to pray so our kids can see that my father is praying. He is waking up in the morning. And wallahi, the two salah which will become noor for you and me and about which Prophet Muhammad says is the most difficult, difficult salah is the salah of Fajr and salah of Isha. Every salah you come in dark when the sun is setting for salah that salah will become noor for you, you and me in our grave and will become noor inshallah on the day of judgment my brothers and my sisters and I will share with you another hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in which he says if somebody reads Quran at home if somebody reads Quran at home two things will happen one shaitan will be gone from that house and number two that house will become spacious for his residents even if it will be a small house but the feeling will be that my house is big enough so shaitan is gone and you will be contained and happy in the house you are living just from reading Quran in our homes my brothers and my sisters I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives you me tawfiq that we can live our life wallahi according to our salah our life should be around salah our life should be around salah and if we really can understand the true meaning of salah as it is said about Sayyid Qutb rahmatullah alayh and Ahmad Mukhtar that when they both were asked to sign a letter asking kings and president to forgive them they say no this finger of shahada once it is raised for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it will not write anything which is against the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is against the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why Ahmad Nursi Muhammad Nursi of Turkey when Russians they captured him and when the journal of that army came everybody stood up for the respect of their journal and Ahmad Nursi said, I will not stand. People ask, why not? He said, I can only stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The body who stands in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only respect is for my Lord, my God. I will not stand up for the respect of anybody else, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and my sisters, that Allah gives you me tawfiq, that we can make masjid our home. Masjid our, really, wallahi, our kids, our kids, you know, I, I can share with you one joke from California. It's a real, it's not a joke, it's a reality. One, one of the family, the young child who was seven, eight year old, when some guest came and they wanted to pray, the child asked them, you know, I have never seen my father praying. My grandmother prays, my mother prays, my sister prays. So I was thinking maybe the prayer is just for women, just for female, it's not for men. Our kids, they are watching us. If we want to leave a legacy, if we want to leave a good example for our kids, Wallahi, connect them with the masjid. If they see you in the morning, then no matter what weather it is, no matter how tired my father is, he gets up in the morning and he rushes for the masjid to catch the Fajr Salah in masjid. No matter how tired is he, when he comes home, it's a Isha time, he goes to masjid. Wallahi, if you and me, 
we will connect ourselves with masjid then inshallah our children they will follow the same footsteps Allah.